more fun with partial pressures. So the image shown here should all be information you know already. We've been through the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere and in the alveoli. We also actually already did it, um, have that pop up in the pulmonary veins. Um, pulmonary veins is the same as within um, the alveolar air because it reached equilibrium. So the only change so far we have is from atmosphere in, that's a place where there's, there's changes. As we go through systemic circulation, there are going to be no changes in partial pressure until we have gas diffusion occur at the systemic capillaries. So if we added in the systemic arteries right here, the partial pressures, you should be able to um, know what those are. Here they are, same as before. We haven't changed partial pressure. No gas diffusion has occurred. No changes in partial pressure have, have occurred. So what's gonna happen at the systemic capillaries? You know what happens, right? These cells are going through cellular respiration. And when they do this, they are producing CO2. and using oxygen. That is why CO2 is going this way and oxygen is going this way. The tissues need more oxygen all the time. Carbon dioxide is, is being, um, is diffusing into the bloodstream. And we actually will zoom into with a gas transport. We'll look at this and it's zoomed in version. So because of cellular respiration, we've got, um, that's going to govern this change right here across the systemic capillaries. And that's what's shown in purple here, right? Is that change from high O2 to high CO2 relatively. So if we were going to look at partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide after gas diffusion has occurred, what would that look like? So for example, in the systemic veins. So systemic veins, we have PO2 and PCO2 to think about. PO2 is gonna be lower than it was before, right? It's gonna be about 40. This is variable depending on, what do you think? Cellular respiration. So um, exercise levels, uh, et cetera. We'll see this again as well. When we look at the oxygen hemoglobin saturation curve. Um, so maybe range from 20 to 70 in reality. So that's why we use 40 as kind of a middle point. Um, CO2 is just gonna go up actually a bit, um, 46. We're gonna put, so it goes up some. So we could, you know, add, add a graph of this. This O2 has gone down substantially, substantially. Oh, I'm using white. White does not work to show up on a white background. Here's my PO2, it's a lot lower. PCO2 has gone up a bit from before. And it's a bit higher than our PO2. Across this bed here, we're not going to look at like what PO2 and CO2 are at individual time points. We're just going to look at kind of at, at the end of the systemic circuit. So what about if we go to the pulmonary arteries? What are the levels there? Well, there's no gas diffusion happening anywhere in there. The only places where PCO2 and PO2 change are the pulmonary capillaries and the systemic capillaries. That's it. So in the pulmonary arteries, we still have PO2 equals 40. Again, depending on our exertion levels, how much carbon dioxide and oxygen we're um, exchanging with our tissues. And PCO2, 46. Lovely. Okay, let's have you do this. Here's your learning check.